Anna had lupus? Yes. Was she in denial about her condition? I think she was. What kind of pain was Anna experiencing? Her whole body would ache. Yeah, she would just shut down, basically. Dr. Robert Lajita, who was not treating Anna Nicole, is a lupus specialist. Lupus is a potentially deadly disease in which the body's immune system attacks the organs and tissues. They can feel very, very tired and have lots and lots of joint pain. They will be unable to walk. Describe how she walked. Basically like an old person. You know, sometimes she would fall. Frank says Anna kept her lupus secret because she didn't want people to feel sorry for her. There was also her image to consider. This music video, shot in 1997, shows a vibrant, playful sex symbol reminiscent of Anna's role model, Marilyn Monroe. The truth of her illness could have derailed Anna's career. Did Howard know that Anna had lupus? Uh, he may have known, he may have not. I didn't know. Still to come, did lupus cause Anna's death? An expert weighs in. If you have chronic severe lupus, you may go on to die. Then more from Howard's emotional tribute to Anna, her undeniable star quality. She was the center of attention. Then releasing the doves after the funeral. And the touching moments between Anna and Danny Lynn, the baby girl she left behind. She said, I'll wait for you like I did last year. E.T.'s exclusive coverage of Anna Nicole's funeral will continue in just a moment, but first, the latest on the autopsy. What actually killed Anna Nicole remains a mystery, but there are new clues in the investigation. Anna's death certificate was released Wednesday, but with one piece of vital information missing. The death certificate says cause of death pending and manner of death pending. On the official document, Howard K. Stern is listed as her nominated executor. Dr. Joshua Perper, the Broward County Medical Examiner, tells E.T. it will be seven or eight days before he is able to put all the clues together to determine what exactly killed Anna. There are tests which are required before the final determination is made. Dr. Perper says he recently interviewed both Mo, Anna's friend and bodyguard, and his wife Taz, who were with Anna in her final minutes. The medical examiner says their information is another clue in solving the puzzle. I was able to interview both the bodyguard and his wife. Every one of the interviews you have was helpful in letting us understand a bit better what happened. Perper would not speculate on any rumored cause of death, including the autoimmune disease lupus. His former colleague, Dr. Cyril Wecht, who was hired by Anna Nicole to perform her son Daniel's autopsy, doubts lupus was the cause of Anna Nicole's death. Lupus does not produce sudden, unexpected death. If you have chronic, severe lupus, which involves the kidneys and the heart and some other organs, you may go on to die. But you will know that you are dying for months and maybe even years. He hasn't seen any toxicology reports on Anna, but he has his own theories about what may or may not have caused her death. I do not see a direct connection between the deaths of Daniel Smith and Anna Nicole Smith. I uh, believe uh, very uh, firmly that methadone was not involved in the death of Anna Nicole Smith. It is possible that there may be other drugs involved and a combination. She was taking different things. Uh, she uh, was ill with a 105 degree fever and a history of pneumonia previously. It is quite possible that we may uh, be told in another week or two when the report is issued that she had uh, a viral pneumonia. He weathered a court battle over her body and is now facing a battle for the baby girl he believes is his. But right now, Howard K. Stern has just one thing on his mind making sure he says all the right things one last time to Anna Nicole. Nobody gave Anna the credit that she deserved. People questioned whether she was bright. She didn't graduate from high school, and she'd be the first to tell you that she wasn't book smart. But I can guarantee you, Anna was as smart as they come. She became a household name, one of the most famous people in the world. And that didn't happen by accident. It wasn't managers, lawyers, agents. It wasn't me. It was her. 
It was all her. Anna was an entertainer. She was a true entertainer. It didn't matter if she was acting, modeling, or just with friends. She knew what people wanted, and she gave it to them, plain and simple. She knew how to grab people's attention, and once she got it, you couldn't turn your head. And Anna knew exactly what she was doing. And there's nobody better at it in the world. From the time I met Anna, there was never one time that she didn't control the room. Howard's touching tribute about Anna Nicole's star quality, how she was anything but a ditzy blonde. She was the center of attention, and it wasn't even close. That's a true entertainer. And you have to be smart, and you have to be strong to pull that off. And Anna was both. Marilyn Monroe was Anna's idol. But I'll bet you, if the two of them lived during the same time period, and they met, Marilyn would be flocking toward Anna, not the other way around. And that's no disrespect to Marilyn. It's just that Anna was that special. You have to be tough to survive in Hollywood, and Anna proved she could take it. There's nobody with a stronger constitution than Anna. She controlled her life. She did it with her full faculties. Her opinions were her opinions, and her judgment wasn't clouded by anything. And she was wonderful. And she was kind. To me, she was perfect. Anna was faced with more adversity in her life than most people would face in a hundred lifetimes. Still to come, more from Howard's moving tribute to Anna Nicole and the promises he's making now. I have to protect your wishes, and most of all, I have to protect Danny Lynn. But first, the funeral that almost didn't happen, the bitter battle for Anna Nicole's body. Anna called her mommy dearest, and I see where that comes from. That's when the funeral of Anna Nicole, an Entertainment Tonight exclusive, continues. After a nearly two-week battle for Anna Nicole's body, all three players in that fight were united in their grief. Howard, Larry, and Anna's estranged mother, Virgie, all in mourning and all under the same roof. It doesn't matter what your estranged family says. It doesn't matter what lawyers say doesn't even matter what a judge says. doesn't matter what the media says. We lived it. We know the truth. Howard's evident anger at the funeral may have come from the battle over who would get Anna Nicole's body. The case went before three Florida appellate judges on Wednesday. Mark was with Howard and his family as he learned Virgie lost her appeal and Anna would be going to the Bahamas to be buried next to Daniel. She's coming home, Howard. Yes. How do you feel? I feel very relieved. Yeah. And I feel like the court got it right because they didn't focus on me. They didn't focus on Virgie Arthur, but they focused on what Anna's intent was. Right. And I think that that's very important, that it's what Anna wanted. Right. She wanted to be in the Bahamas with Daniel, and that's what's going to be carried out. But there were real fireworks when Howard told Mark exactly what happened when Virgie came to his home on Tuesday night to meet Danny Lynn for the first time. I would not let Virgie alone with Danny Lynn. No, that's not going to happen. You showed a lot of cooperation last night when Virgie came here. Uh, what was the mood like? You know, it was, it was actually pretty tense. Um, I was not happy about uh, Virgie coming in to see Danny Lynn, because I know that that's not what Anna would have wanted. Howard says Anna Nicole's mother came to the home he shared with Anna around 8 o'clock Tuesday night with her sister-in-law, two attorneys, and two bodyguards. As she went in, paparazzi strained to look over the fence and into the estate. 